Well, things have changed since the last time I taped. Uh, here it is. It's last day of August. They're starting to put the roof on and the support for the steeple. So we'll take some pictures of the roofing. Hopefully people will be working in the next few minutes. Take some overall shots so we can see the difference. Now, <laughs> okay, we'll pick on somebody else here. Okay. <laughs> and, and them, have them come closer to you. Have them stand in the foreground. And then use the focus trick I told you before. You go, you, you zoom in onto the monument, make it in good form. Get a baseball that's over there already, then I guess you're going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. But in normal things where people aren't moving a whole lot, you're at a party and you, just, you want to go from this side of the room to this side of the room, you don't have to be in a hurry, then just do it sort of slowly. And then when you do that, everybody along the way is fairly distinct, in, depending on how slow you do it. And you still, sometimes if you're at a, an event where everybody's lined up nicely like you guys are, then you can just sort of go in and spend a little tiny bit of time on each one. You know, like maybe if the you guys are back there further, you zoom out and you get a good shot of everybody. Or you can reverse it. You can start out and then start to zoom in on the individual people. And you can, if you practice, zoom in and pan at the same time. But I'll tell you one thing. If you're zoomed in really close, look what happens. Yeah. After this, oh, <laughs> besides the fact that, that I freaked out here. If I, if, now, if I pan, if I pan, Look how much easier it is to blur when I pan, mm -hmm. because I'm in really close now. And it, so, remember, if you're in, in close, you're not, you don't want to do fast pans. It's better to zoom back out again before you pan, and then you can start panning while you're zooming out. But don't don't try to zoom a lot when you're in close. Um, tilting really follows the same rules. You know, don't do any sudden tilts. Try to have your, your tripod adjusted smoothly. And I really, if you've noticed, I say tripod a lot. I really do recommend you have a tripod for a majority of what you're shooting, unless it's a quick shot type of thing. If it's a quick shot type of thing, then with the same thing with your body. You've got to try and move your body smoothly and try and move up and down smoothly and slow a little bit slower than you normally would. And uh, that will really in increase the quality and that takes some practice and I still keep practicing on that. Every situation is different, especially if you're emotional about what's happening. If it's something that's personal in your family or whatever, you're not you're you're gonna be a little bit less smooth than you may want to be. So just practice when you're not in an emotional situation, when it's just something at home that's not not really that special. So I'm not very good at this. Now these little mini cams, it's a little harder to keep on your shoulder and still have a good angle. So then I have to sort of experiment. So when I'm panning, I sort of have to change your stance and try to move smoothly. 
And then if you're moving forward, that's another trick. That's something we're going to practice second hour. Walking around with our cameras. That's uh, dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> we can go out in the hall and walk around a little bit because there's not much room in here. And try that. Since I've got the data screen on now, it'll record like that. Now, if I wanted to... If I wanted to have some kind of countdown type of thing on my on my final tape, that's fine. But if you don't, then you don't want that on there. So I have to turn data screen off. Now, if you don't have that on your camera, you don't need to worry about it. But.